All right, here we go. We're in uh, Matthew chapter 16. We're in week three of this series entitled Fool's Gold. And today I want to use for a subtopic, it says what it says. It says what it says. Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Again, I want to use for a subtopic today. It says what it says. Somebody say it says what it says. says, says. Uniquely, ladies and gentlemen, I believe... Let me rather say it this way. I am in a season of my life where I am no longer having to be a puppet. I am becoming. I know who I am. I know who God has called me to be. I know what my assignment is. And I'm learning how to stand sure, flat-footed on my assignment. One of those complexities relative to that is... I am finding conflict with some of the things we can do in modern church and how it can come across. You may find me sometimes at the conclusion of my message a bit perplexed on how I want to move next. Because after I preach, I don't believe there is a recipe for what you have to do. I believe that even as you do through the message, you are led by the Spirit of God. It's what I believe. And one of the things that I found is we have made, one of the reasons so many people are having difficulty being and living as a Christian or believer is because we are giving them access too easily. I think in some cases we are not even communicating the truth of what it is to be a believer. So some people are signing up for things without first reading the fine print. We say things such as, if the Lord is moving your heart and you want to come to know Jesus today, just raise your hand right where you are. Everything's going to be fine. And they raise their hand and we celebrate, receive, they're now part of the family of God. And you don't become a part of the family of God by raising your hand. We have a generation of Christians who want to be like Christ but don't want to change. They say, I'm going to do me, and he's still going to love me anyway. I'm just going to be me. And that's not, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. He says, number one, you got to deny yourself. It means get over you. As believers, sometimes we run from churches, we run from ministries, we run from good relationships because you're making yourself more important than you really are. You are no longer the main character in this thing called life relative to your story because we say it all the time, if it had not been for Jesus. But if it truly hadn't been for Jesus, why do you make it so much about you? He says, you got to deny yourself, take up your cross, die to you and what you want. What does that mean? It's no longer about you. Lord, I'm looking for my mans and them, and you know he cute. No, he's not the one that I have for you. When's the last time you asked God, can I date him? Because in our minds, this is an area that God has nothing to do with. And how can you live under the lordship of the almighty if you got pockets of your life that you have separated God from? I need him in every area, in my relationships, in my money, in my thinking. I need you to be a part of it all. He says, take up your cross and follow me. But I want to go this way. I'm going this way. Come on. I don't want to do that today. I'm doing this today. Come on. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is what I want. This is not where I'm going. Come on. Uh I want to be a part of the city church. Synergy is Tuesday night at 645. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Come on. Sorry. This is higher level living when it comes to, why is this important? Because as it is in our faith, 
so it is in our relationships. Because we have allowed people to dumb down what it means to love and be loved by God, unknowingly you have dumbed down what it means to love and to be loved by you. You have allowed people to sign up for positions they don't even qualify for in your life. People you should not even be giving attention to, you are now entertaining because somebody has redefined what it means to love you. Why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, 28, 30 through 30, message translation, are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me, get away with me. You recover your life. I'll show you how to take real risks. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm. All right, this, we're familiar with this one, right? What I need you to see is this is not some miracle, some hocus pocus. He said, if you're tired, it's because you're doing it the wrong way. So follow me. Watch me. Come with me. Learn of me and from me and apply what you see in my life in your own and see if this mode of doing doesn't produce different results. I don't want this just to be another relationship series. I want this series to help give you better results. I'm tired of dating clowns. You need better results. Your recipe is wrong. You're talking to the wrong people. You have such an emptiness on the inside of you that if somebody's breathing, it moves you. Oh, he's so cute. We we, got to work on this. Everybody with me? So we've communicated in week one, agreement is essential. Someone say agreement. Last week, we talked about alignment. Someone say alignment. This week, we want to consider admiration and or adoration. Generally, when you hear these things, it's in the context of God. But I want to suggest to you from a relational perspective, if you're going to commit your life to somebody for the rest of your life, you need to make sure you can adore them and they adore you. That you admire them and they admire you. Why is this important? Because we're entering into a season where you can no longer be tolerated. I'm not just with people who putting up with me. You got to celebrate me. When I get up in the morning and my feet hit the ground, you got to say, Lord, thank you for keeping my girl one more day because I don't know what I would do without her. There's got to be that level of appreciation for the person you're in relationship with that when God gives them another day to breathe, you tell God thank you because I don't know if I would have been able to make it without them. Watch this. Here's the reality. You can tell how someone genuinely feels about you by how their circle responds to you after meeting you for the first time. You can tell how someone genuinely feels about you by how their circle responds to you after having met for the first time. Watch this. Because if you meet them for the first time and they're scratching their head like, I I don't know her. You've never mentioned her. Hmm. Means they don't care much about you. They don't think enough of you to talk about you when you're not present. But when you are deeply moved by somebody, even when they're not present, you can't help but to talk about them. You know what? My wife, she's just been so good to me. My kids and my mom and our leadership team. City Church at Goldsboro is so amazing. Even in their absence, I am talking about you. I ran up, I ran up uh, to, to one of your, ain't, ain't naming no names, one of your family members. One of your family members. I ran into them at a ball game yesterday. Ran into one of your family members. And the way they wanted to embrace me and hug me and appreciate me and say thank you. All right, here's, here's a, the King James Version is say I honor you. The PTV translation says if it hadn't been for you, if it hadn't been for the city church, my, my loved one was going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But whatever y'all doing down there, keep doing it because you're changing my baby's life. And you got to be in a position that when you're meeting new people from their circle, they should have already heard about you. How do you love me that deeply, but you're not talking to me about anybody else? Are you still with me? Watch this. Why is this important? Because of supply and demand. Admiration 
uh, 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 admonition is supply and demand. What does this mean? Here we go. All right. So when the supply is high, the demand is low. That's economics. Here's from a relational perspective. When you have multiple means of getting your needs met, then your honor and appreciation for what I bring to the table is less. All right, that was a long introduction. Let me put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can eat. What I want to do is keep you from getting married, getting 15 years down, and realizing you don't really need them. I got, a, I got, I got too many options just to be committed to you. Don't, I don't really need, yeah, you got my ring, but I got other people. I don't, it, it, and, and I lose that degree of honor. Everybody with me? All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, have you ever, do you know? Mm. All right, all right. You go in the refrigerator and you want something to drink. When the refrigerator is full, there isn't the same level of value for everything that's in it. You don't even, oh, I am preaching right now. You don't even appreciate it the same. You got a whole thing of tea, a whole thing of fruit punch, a, 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 a whole thing of, a, of almond chocolate milk. You got a whole thing of Ciroc. You got a whole. Somebody back there like, that's my word right there. That's my word. That pineapple watermelon flavor gets it in. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> I mean, it's in there. All right. Welcome to the city church. All right. Here we go. Why, why is this important? All right. When the, ref, when the refrigerator is full, you don't have the same level of honor. But when you go to that refrigerator and corners are tight and means are low, that last means something. When it's overflowing, it's all good. But when it gets low, leave me last. I need like, there's another level of honor when it starts to run dry. And one of the reasons we're losing honor in relationships is because you haven't experienced what it's like to run dry. You got too many options. So when I'm committing to you, I'm committing to you. You're my only option. If you don't meet that need, it doesn't get met. Why is that important? Because when she comes home, I'm happy to see her. She's the only well I drink from. We're in a community where culture says it's okay to recycle water. Watch this. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through 12, put on the full armor of God that you can stand against the, the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against spiritual forces, evil, and heavenly realms. Why is this important? Because the enemy is not just after your soul. He is after your relationship. Why? Because your relationship, God ordained marriage. And anything that God blesses, Satan desires to break. Anything God constructs, Satan wants to destroy it. And just the fact that you, to the best of your ability, have made a commitment to one person for the rest of your life, all of hell's armies are against you and your relationship. So, so, so how does the enemy generally come after you? He comes after you through temptation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, he, he comes after you through manipulative emotional ploys. He comes after you by way of distraction. Are you with me? First Peter chapter 5 and 8 says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Message translation says, keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. All right. What does that mean? In the book of Genesis, we see where Eve was distracted by fruit. 
We see where Solomon was distracted by his people-pleasing tendencies, where he chose to obey the people instead of the will and the way of God. We see where Jew, oh Jesus, pastor, I just mind my business, just me and my family, I'm out here making my money. Oh, come here, Judas. It says Judas had a love for money. His relationship with, God, with, with Jesus was destroyed because he was consumed by compassion for things. Distraction is all throughout the Bible, and if you're not careful, distraction is coming to find you. All right. It's some, some, oh, God, I love you for this. Because some of us are sitting here like, this word ain't for me today. Because you're thinking about the big distractions, but the enemy is too smart to send you a big one. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So, uh, if you're on the water and you're driving a boat and you set your little dial to go three degrees to the right, if you go three degrees to the right and travel long enough, you could end up in another country. But you don't notice it. Because you didn't turn 30 to 60 to 90, you still feel like you're on course. The enemy is too smart to make you do a 45 degree turn. So he turns you three degrees. Because you don't even realize you're going the wrong way. But three years from now, you and your spouse will be in a whole different place. Because he sends small, subtle distractions. This is why he is so intelligent and he is so smart because he is in our homes and we don't even know it. We feed in him and don't even realize he's at the table. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, can, can, I, give it, can I give it to you this way? So if I, if I told you, you meant the, the bully from middle school, all right? So if I told you the bully from middle school hit you in your DMs, and he said, come Wednesday at noon, he meeting you on Center Street, and he bringing calls to pause. It's going down. Now, I know, Mother, I know you've been saved for a long time, but you're going to go back to some of your unsaved friends. You're going to go blow off your blade. She about to get this smoke today. I know I've been saved, but they, nobody going to be talking to me like this. Why? Because you put out a threat. And the threat makes me uneasy. So because you put a threat on my life, although I love Jesus, I got to prepare myself for whatever might come. Mm. Huh. <laughs> Why is that important? For the enemy desires to sift you. For I have come that you might have life. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. His plan is to take your life. And many of us, unlike the bully, aren't even planning. It ain't real. He can't. He can't do much. So you will allow him to get up on you when it's too late to prepare. He is coming. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He wants your marriage. Why? Because for many of us, if he gets your marriage, he gets your children. He, he gets your children, and now, now your children are thinking, well, you know, mommy and daddy spent all this time in church, so God clearly can't be too real, because if he ain't helped them, how are he going to help me? And it, now it becomes generational. So we live in these bubbles to think it's just about me when the enemy's plan goes three generations down the line. Why? Because there's a great grandchild who's been born soon in years with a higher level of anointing. But if I set a three degree change right now in three generations, they won't even realize they're off. It ain't about you. It's about what God is doing in your seed. We are carrying out a selfish. You, yeah, you called that. <laughs> That's why she Maria. We are carrying out a selfish, spiritually pornographic generation. It's all about self-pleasure. It's only about me. All the decisions I make are just about me. Not realizing how many other people are impacted by your yes. All right, let me pause and parenthetically insert. Some of you are here today, despite what you think about our elders generation, some of you are here today because our elders held on to their yes. I don't even like your daddy right now, but for you, I still say yes. 
If it was up to me, I would have left a long time ago. But for my seed, I still say yes. And they fought so your yes could be real. And we are opening up the door to enemy elements playing ballerina and dancing with the devil spitting in the face of our elders who fought so we could be free. Why am I like this today? Are you with me? Proverbs 4, 10, 15. All right, here we go. Proverbs 4, 10, and 15. Listen, my son, the book of wisdom. Accept what I say. He said what he said. And the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. and Don't let it go. Guard it well with your life. Don't set a foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go your way. All right. How many of y'all are wrestling fans? Y'all remember, uh, anybody remember Jake the Snake Roberts, All right? Jake the Snake, he wouldn't just beat you when he, after he beat you, he'd go get his bag, he'd take out his snake, pour it on you. It's like humiliating, right? All right, I, I could feel uneasiness in the room already, like we don't do snakes, we don't do snakes, PT. What if I told you Jake the Snake was back there, sitting in the middle of that section, all right? If you really felt like what I was saying was true, I felt people clutching purses right then. Like, I need a new seat. I'm about to move. All right? Why? Because I don't play with poisonous snakes. <laughs> if, if there's a snake near me, poisonous or not, we're going the other way. I don't know the difference between poisonous or not. I just assume they all poisonous. They all are the devil. Bill's above. So I'm going the other way. All right? We protect ourselves at such a high degree for poisonous snakes. But we open ourselves to poisonous media poisonous movies and poisonous TV shows and poisonous conversations that are setting themselves up. Watch this. The Bible says don't give your adversary a foothold. Why is that important? Have you, have you ever been trying to get in a room, somebody been locking you out and you pushing and pushing and they pushing back, pushing back. What, what is your go-to? If I can get my foot in it. Mm. Don't give them a foothold. If I can get my foot in, why is that important? Because if I ever get my foot in the door, this is not where I, I tend to stay. I intend to take over. But the takeover starts with a foothold. And some of us are giving the enemy permission to settle his foot. This is not where he intends to stay. This is how it begins. Because if I get my foot in this door, I'm going to open the door. I'm going to rip it on the hinges. And every enemy element that is assigned to your family by generations, I will usher them in with a foothold. Here's a problem. We have become so comfortable as Christians that the enemy has a foothold and he doesn't even have to fight for it anymore. Yeah, just come, come around 9 o'clock when my show come on. Yeah, I'll leave the door cracked for you. A foothold. Oh Are you with me? Yes. Watch this. Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Catch for us the foxes. Are you still with me? The little foxes that ruin the vineyards. Our vineyards that are in bloom. This is, this is a conversation of love. For those of you who are married, you need to read the Song of Songs and then go and, go and get you a commentary. It's, this stuff gets really good. All right. For those of you who are married, you need to throw some, you need to memorize some of these verses. You understand? And, uh, and, 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 and he says, uh, catch for us. He, he is talking. Theologians kind of go back and forth about what this conversation is like. You can look in some Bibles and this is a conversation speaking to the woman and other Bibles is a conversation speaking to the man. Here's what, I, here's what I know. It is a conversation that the two are having together. We have to be considerate and aware of the little foxes that will destroy everything that God is trying to do in our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not on you. It's not on me. This is something we have to do together because, watch this, he didn't say these big bad wolves. 
He said it's the, the little ones that, are, that look so innocent. Matter of fact, they're so innocent, you'll mess around and pet them, not knowing his intention is to destroy your future. He said it is those small, deceptive foxes. Watch this. Our vineyard is in bloom, but it's not plucking season yet. And if you start pulling of the fruit too early, you would destroy the entirety of our harvest. So he says we got to be considerate of the small foxes that are destroying. All right, here we go. What are some small foxes in our lives? Number one, uncontrolled desire. Whether you're married, whether you're single, I don't care who you are. If you are breathing and you have uncontrolled desire, that is a small fox. If you are single, you are setting yourself up to be a fornicator. If you are married, you're setting yourself up to be an adulterer. If you cannot create discipline over your body, you're potentially setting yourself up to be a rapist because it all begins with control and discipline in your body. So I know you're married and you, and you got feelings and you always need it, but you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't have to have a yes all the time. That's manipulative behavior. I got to have it. You only need water. Food on occasion and air. You do not have to have sex. For most of us, at least until the age of 21, 18, 16, 13. For most of us, you at least went that long without having it and you're being fine. So you can go one night. You're going to be good. No, I don't think I'm going to make it. So this is a you problem that you got to deal with. This is this undisciplined, uncontrollable desire. It is like a, it is like a dam that breaks, where water, oh Jesus, where water has been pent up, and finally, when the dam breaks, the water begins to rush. You have control issues that are now pent up, and you just want somebody that allow you to let it break so it'll roll out. But at some point, you gotta tell that dog sit and stay. Jesus, I, 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 I was not trying to suggest for women to call men dogs. I'm telling in many cases, men and even some of you. Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. And even some of y'all, you got to look at yourself and say, sit, stay over there. This, this, is what I, this is what I do with my dog. Hmm? I don't know if you notice dog training is best done in private but it's best proven in public. I got to teach you how to honor my voice in private. Then I can prove how well you have learned the lesson by taking you in public places and see how you still honor my voice. So you got to teach yourself how how, how to control these feelings in private. And for those of you who are married, you got to say, baby, test me. Take me to the mall and whatever happens, don't leave me. I know I'm out of control. I'm crazy, but I want to be free. Everybody understand? Watch this. Why is this important? He says in uh, in, in chapter uh, 2, Song Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 7, Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles, by the does of the field, do not arouse, awaken your, your love until it so desires. I don't know what it is. Man, listen, my first real relationship was with my wife. Uh, we, were, we were great friends around 15, 16. We started dating uh, 17, 18. We got engaged around 20. At the age of 20, we got married at the age of 22. She's my first real relationship. For those of y'all who are single, I pray for you. Y'all, like this, this culture y'all in is crazy. I can't imagine how difficult it is to be in your position. Can I be your spiritual father for a second? I can't imagine how difficult it is to be in your position, but neither can I understand or comprehend how you put yourself in some of the positions you put yourself in and wonder why you can't be kept. You had the audacity to put your dry wood near a fire and then wonder why you burn it. You, you know you. Why did you even do that? 
Because we're playing with the enemy when his desire is to kill you. All right, all right. I see he going to kill me. He, he ain't going to kill me. All right, let, let, can I give it to you this way? So you remember in the garden when God told Adam and Eve, all the garden is yours. Basically, the 90% is yours. This 10% belongs to me. Don't touch my 10. Satan comes and says, you need to get up on that 10. They get, a, they get up on that 10. God says, don't get up on that 10. You get up on that 10, you're going to die. All right? You ain't going to die. They get up on that 10, right? And they didn't die. Did they? They were still there. When God came and gave them penalty, they were still breathing. Everybody with me? All right. Here's the problem. Just because you don't die in the moment doesn't mean your death certificate hasn't been signed. And for some of us, we're putting ourselves in a position, walking away, saying, I'm still alive. But your death certificate has already been signed. It's only a matter of time before full manifestation of the plan, the plot, and the ploy. The, mm, mm, mm. Watch this. Have you ever watched an adventure movie and they're doing a lot of blowing up? Hmm? If I'm trying to blow up fast, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a grenade. Pull the pin. Shh, 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 shh. I'm out. Huh? Right? If I got a minute, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a dynamite. Take it. I'm going to light it. I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to walk. Sashay. Because I got a little time before that fuse blows off. But just because you got time, don't forget, it's already been lit. It is going to blow. It's only a matter of time. And some of us feel like we're cool because you're thinking you survived grenades. But the enemy set a dynamite for you. You alive for the moment, but it is going to blow. The fire has already been set. Are you with me? Am I doing all right today? It's going to get better next week. I promise. Can I give you a small thought to number two? Mistrust and jealousy. Mistrust and jealousy. And it, it has the tendency to be covered by leadership. I'm the head. I'm the leader. I got to always be aware of what's going on. No, 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 bro. You got a jealous thing going on on the inside of you. What is going on? Why do you find it so difficult to trust people? I find it offensive when people say certain things to me. Yeah. I was doing some, watch this, I was doing some business for the church the other day, and uh, I was at the building, and somebody came to do some work. I was getting ready to pay them, uh, and I gave them the card. They're swiping the card. This, this card. this card is declining. I said, bro, no, our church gives pretty well. That card ain't declining. Run it again. The card is declining. I give them another card that I have for the church, ran that card, Card is a client. I said, bro, it's your machine. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Our church good. You understand? This is, this is, this is what I forgot, though, is about a week ago, I misplaced my cards. And I called Kayla, told Kayla to put a pause on all my cards. Man, it was hours later in the busyness of doing work at the church. I gave my card to somebody to run to the store. They called me, said, PT, I got your card. I'm like, oh, man, you got my card. But we forgot that my card was still on pause. All right. But speaking of pause, my card is on pause, but I'm about to put my pause on this brother because this perception that I am trying to get over on him, manipulate. I'm like, bro, you need to call your store or something. I don't know. He's like, you're going to go to the ATM, get cash. No, I ain't. That's not how we operate. That's not what we do. So you call you because it's, it's clear. Now, it was clearly on me. But this assumption that I'm trying to get over on, on him was offensive to me. Mm -mm. Because I'm trustworthy to the best of my ability. I don't, I don't do things like that. And because I don't do things like that, I don't expect things like that. Because I don't do things like that. I don't expect things like that. So generally, when you're around people who always expect things like that, it's possibly because they do things like that. You see that? Can I give you another? Number three, selfishness and pride. It's all about you. 
refusing to not acknowledge when you're wrong and at fault. Maybe worse than that, number four, an unforgiving attitude. You know you're wrong. Know you're wrong, and you still ain't going to apologize. Or people do you wrong, and you won't accept their apology. You're going to continue to penalize them. No, nope, I'm not ready to free you yet. Can I give you one more? Huh. Can I give you one more? All right, small foxes. Small foxes can come alive in people who constantly sweat the small stuff. All right, I'm not going to make me the hero. I'll be the villain. I know sometimes when I need to sit down somewhere and leave everybody alone when I am sweating the small stuff. I am mad because of what's going on over here, but I'm going to make life more difficult for you so you can feel my pain. So I'm just finding a reason to argue with you. Oh, so you breathing? I hate the way you breathe. What do, what do you want me to do? <gasps> Is that more comforting? <laughs> when you eat your food, why you got to smack like that? I'm hungry. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just hungry. So when you're one of those people always sweating the small stuff, that is a small fox. Why, why is that important? He says in, uh, in chapter 2, verse 7, do not arouse or awaken love until it desires. We're in a culture where we are playing a lot. I mean, we're, 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 we're lighting lighters uh, to our love and, and trying to blow it out when it catches flame. I didn't mean for the burn. I just wanted to catch a little bit. We, we, we playing around with this thing. I think I saw that on Friday. Don't worry about it. Anyway, it's a whole other conversation. Why is this important? I remember uh, when I was young, um, when I was young, I'd go to a few uh, school dances. My parents don't know, so don't tell them. All right. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to go on 43, and they still don't know to this day that I went to a couple school dances. I think, matter of fact, I think, is, is Miss Edwards in here? I think one of those was a birthday party of hers that I slipped to. It, yeah, it was a heathen party. I slid in there. Yeah, I was, I was all out of place. I think Jahari was there. Now I think about it, I think I, I, think I saw him in there. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I remember that, and I remember, I, you know, you know, I've always had a call on my life, y'all. So you know, I'm pretty smooth. When I was young, I used to dance like Usher, but I never did it in public. I never, you know, gyrating and vibrating. Yeah. Some of y'all ladies, I saw your Instagram when Usher had a halftime show. I'm gonna talk to you about that. I saw you, mother. A young man show sure is fine. Use him, Jesus. That ain't Jesus. <laughs> we'll post anything on social media and put it on the Lord. Post a selfie with your breast all out. Hashtag blessed. Take that down, you nasty. <laughs> Try to put everything on Jesus, right? And I go, I go to a few of these parties, and I'm that type of dude. I'm on the wall, you know what I'm saying? I got security issues, so I got to keep everybody in my peripheral. I need to know what's going down. I'm on the wall. I ain't doing nothing. I'm over here minding my business, and every now and then these girls come all on me. They be all on the wall, and I'm like, girl, go on, on. Stop playing with me. Stop, stop playing with me. You better go on, girl. You better go on, right? Because I'm not even about this life. Why, why, why did I always do that? Because I'm not about this life. I don't know nothing about this life, but what I do know is if you awaken this beast on the inside of me. Don't you run away without taming him. You understand what I'm saying? Don't you, don't you do that. I, I, know, I know what's going on. I know what's going on in, on the inside of me. In essence, it's like, girl, don't play with me. And we're in a generation where playing with one another has become cool, kosher, copacetic. We're going to be good. Why? Right, because 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 I know me, you hush, <laughs> just hush, stop it. And as brothers and sisters, this is not the position we should be putting one another in. This is what the world does. But we came out of that. We made a decision to do it the Lord's way. Everybody with me? 
It's time. All right. It's time for us to get ready to go. Why is this important? I'm going to give you this last and then I'm, and we're going we're to segue on in. Uh, give us some elevated music, brother, so we can get spiritual on the way out. Why is, all, why is all this important? All this is important because I heard this, and I'll never forget it. I still grapple with it, but I feel like there's still a lot of truth in it. And here's the thought. It says, what we do in moderation, our children will do in excess. What you feel like you can get away with and tame it will overwhelm your children. I grapple with that, but there's some truth in that in some perspective. And this is how many of us live our lives. It's just me. I ain't bothering nobody. Let nobody bother me. I ain't putting nobody else at risk. It's just me. I don't see where the Bible says anything about that. It's just me. Can, I, can we read something together? I want you to go with me to Mark chapter 9. Take your time and hurry up. Mark chapter 9, <clears throat> beginning at verse 42. It says, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to end a life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to end a life crippled than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one than, t than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Now, can we look back at that one more time? And uh, I want us to see it through a fresh lens. Are you ready for this? And I want you to think as we read this passage with pornography in mind. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, your brother and sister who you keep playing lighter with, if you cause them to, to stumble because you awaken the desire on the inside of them, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around your neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, PT ain't hurt nobody. I'm just satisfying me. But if your hand... If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to end a life maimed than with two hands and to go to hell where the fire never goes out. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. I just tripped up and landed over her house. Cut it off. You ain't tripping over there no more. Cut it off. It is better for you to end a life crippled than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And maybe here's the best one. And if your eye causes you to stumble, you just go to Instagram and here it is. <laughs> this is what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Not to look upon a young woman lustfully. Here's the difference. He, he, he doesn't say you're in the wrong because you saw her. It's one thing to recognize beauty. It's another thing to set intention to use it. So what's the difference between a look and a lust? A look says I am aware. Lust says I will use. So I am personally being aroused by you without your permission. I am looking with the intent of lust. I am. Mm. All right, let me. All right, let me. Let me give it to you from the streets. Mm. Did you see her? My God, she is fire. Let me. Let me look one more time. Oh, she is bad. Mm. Mm, that girl is bad. That girl is fire. She is bad. Why? I'm, I'm calculating 3D images. So when I need to satisfy myself and I can't take my mind far enough, I will hit rewind on what I saw. I collected enough data 
that she can become my pornographic figure although she hasn't signed the permission slip. He says, watch this. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Pastor T, I, I've, been having, I've been having this conversation with my spouse. I've been having it with the person I'm dating. And they just not with it, PT. I mean, I'm trying. And they're just, they always telling me, you asking too much of me. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I got my needs. All right, here's what I learned. It's generally not that you're asking too much of them. It's just you're asking the wrong person. So when they say you're asking too much, I'm asking the wrong person. There's somebody out here who's willing to honor the way that I choose to honor God and to separate my life. Can I give it to you this way? Uh, Y'all know I'm a basketball head. I used to coach all my life when I played 10 pounds right here. He was on one of my team's dog, by the way. If we had a church league, he would destroy all y'all by himself. I'm going to be the coach because I'm not doing that no more. Them days are long gone playing with y'all. My insurance don't cover this. Watch this. So even when I was younger, I was always do everything right. I'm into the details. Everything's got to be done right. I'm that dude when I go bowling, I'm going to point, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up videos on YouTube on how to do it the right way. So if you've ever seen me bold, I never did any training. I just watched a lot of YouTube videos. And I'm really not that good, but it looks pretty. You understand what I'm saying? It, it looks pretty. So I'm, I'm always, so um, a little over a week ago, my oldest, Christian, he had his final basketball game of the year. And uh, Christian, y'all, I love hoop and I don't play no games. You understand what I'm saying? LeBron is my guy. Jordan is the GOAT. And if you don't like that, you're welcome to go to another church. LeBron is my guy. Jordan is the GOAT. But Kobe had something that LeBron clearly don't have, all right? And I promise you, I am not lying. I'm not one of them dudes that lie just because it's your children. When I, I hope he ain't even in the room to hear me say this. He back there. He, he probably recorded. When I, saw, when I saw my son on that court that day, I saw a little Kobe. I saw a little black mamba on him. Watch this. He... He's in, the first, he's in the first half, and he's, his shot is just off. He's taking great shots. It's just one of those days. I've always told him, keep shooting. Keep shooting. Okay, uh, Dad, I don't miss 10 in a row, okay? But if you generally shoot 50% from the field, if you just miss 10, in most cases, you're going to make the next 10. But you don't give your chance of doing it if you don't take the shot. So keep shooting. So he had time, you know, he's doing his thing. He walks over. He's like, you good? You good? Anything you need? We talk, whatever. He goes back out. Boom. Hits one. Boom. Comes back. Hits one. Boom. Comes back. Hits another. Boom. All right. Next thing I know, he gives somebody a little fade. Boom. I say, he feel it. <laughs> he, he feel it. All right. He's on the three-point line. Get somebody a step back. Boom. Oh. My goodness. He dribbles up to the three-point line. Boom. Comes down again. Three feet behind it. Boom. Steps across half court. Boom. Good God almighty. Game's over. Eighth grade. He had 40. Not playing to you. And it was one of the prettiest 40 I've ever seen in my life. Now, my middle son, Mason. Mason's a dog. He's got a whole nother level of competitiveness in him. Mason and I have been having this problem for a long time. Mason's, he's Mighty Mouse. He's, 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 shorter, he, he, he's shorter right now, but he want to do big things. You understand? So Mason, I mean, last year, year and a half, AAU last season, I mean, Mason, he had a little Steph on him, like Steph Curry. He, this boy, he, he, listen, he get behind that line, boom, 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 knock down four or five in a row. So little. My problem was, Mason, I don't want you shooting that shot. Dad, but I'm making it. But you're sacrificing in order to make it by shooting it wrong. 
And when you get older and when you get stronger and you have the strength to shoot it right, you're going to be shooting it wrong. And because you didn't start to do it the right way, you're going to be an inconsistent shooter because you don't have a system for how you put the ball to the hoop. Everybody understand? The same way I just said that and you just fell asleep is the same way Mason fell asleep on me. Last AAU season, last AAU season, uh, last summer, Mason comes out, whoo, boom, whoo, 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 he come down. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. This is so embarrassing. What is this? Ice in my veins. I'm so embarrassed. So Mason, Mason's in his basketball season right now, and in two games, probably 27 shots. <laughs> Mason puts the ball up, you understand? In two games, I don't think Mason's hit one three-pointer. And Mason come to me and he said, Daddy, anything, anything you could say? I said, Mason, you remember when I told you I didn't want you shooting that shot? Because in order for you to do it at the age you were at, you were going to have to do it wrong. But when you made it the wrong way, you would become intoxicated by the applause and you would keep shooting it even though it was wrong. So now, Mason, it is a year later and you have still been putting up good shots the wrong way. Now you're inconsistent. You are now reaping the benefits. You are now reaping the harvest of doing what I told you not to do prematurely. So if you want to fix it, you got to go back to what I said. Go back to doing it the right way. And as it is with Mason's shooting, so it is with pornographic behavior. I ain't hurting nobody. It's just me. I'm making it, but you're off. And you're going to keep doing it long enough that you're going to jump the broom in African-American tradition. And you're going to go to your honeymoon. And she's going to come out of her beautiful white beige down, depending on how her life was set up. She gonna come out of her gown. And she gonna be like, here I am, big daddy. And you're gonna have to look at her and say, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, you will never be enough to satisfy me. You don't know how many women I've been with physically, Instagram, Pornhub, people I saw at church where I took images without their permission. You are competing with all of them and I'm so sorry I forgot to tell you. So she's looking for a husband and you're looking for a whore. I didn't I didn't I didn't sign up for this. Why is that important? Cuz you got an opportunity to stop now right now every time you engage by yourself you are offsetting your mental capabilities by three degrees it's just three degrees can I give you some good news before we go here's the good news however the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 13 no temptation has overtaken you Accept what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He'll not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide for you a way of escape. Because somebody can be taking this more heavily than the others because in your mind, I can never be like them. You're more like them than you know. I'm just a few years past it and I've learned how to package it a little bit better, but I know what it's like to be in your shoes. The difference that separates me from you is I believe that God is faithful. And when I found myself in trouble, he was faithful enough to come in and pull me out of the mess that I got myself. Does anybody know what it's like to have been caught in mess that you didn't think you were ever going to be out? But I'm here today to say he broke me out of the miry clay. He placed my feet on a rock to stay. He did it, not me. 
How do you know? How do you know God did it? Because sometimes when I see it, I still want it. Who going to tell you that truth? He's keeping me. And he is able to keep you if you want to be kept. Having done it all right, don't make all the right decisions. But this is about my future and your future, not about your past. Pastor T, I find myself in difficult positions quite often. I don't know how to manage these seasons. I'm going to help you manage, then I'm going to leave you alone. Can I have two minutes? I'm going to help you manage, then I'm going to leave you alone. Here's one of the ways to help manage those seasons of your life. Y'all do know I start at like 1130, right? Okay. I'm just saying. All that hooking and bucking y'all was doing? <laughs> Sit down. All right. All right. So when I find myself in, an, in a compromising position, I go through in my head first before I ever allow it to be acted out. I go through all the consequences in my head before they're ever acted out. What, is it, what does that look like? Okay. So she's cute. And boy, the way I'm feeling right now, God is able. But if I say yes to this, I'm going to disappoint every person who comes in here on a Sunday morning believing God's going to use me to do something in their lives. And I don't want to have to deal with that pain. I'm going to disappoint all of our leaders and everyone who trusted me. I'm going to have to look at my three boys and explain to them why daddy can only come over to visit now. You're never going to go to mommy's room and see daddy in there again. Never. That says, daddy made, it, daddy made a bad decision and I hurt you, son. And that because of daddy's poor decision, you possibly may be introduced to another man who may try to carry the role that I dropped because I moved myself out of position. I did that. And in order for me to say yes to you, young lady, I am going to have to look at my wife and deal with her pain and agony because she believed in me. I got to look at her father whose heart is broken because he trusted me with his daughter's heart and I just snapped it in two for a good time? Is that worth it? It ain't worth it to me. So you got to think about all those consequences before they become reality. In many cases, that'll send you back. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I did. I'm just sorry. And I want us to be on good terms again. With, with some of the things the enemy is trying to do in my mind and in my heart, I'm not going to allow him to win. We got to fight for what we have. Standing your feet all across the room. <clears throat> so here's your homework assignment today as we transition, and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go. If you're married, your responsibility is to have a conversation with your spouse. And we gotta come to grips with the small foxes that are trying to destroy the vine of the harvest God wants to produce in our marriage. Because if we fail, it's not just us who fail. It's everything and everyone assigned to our life who's also going to be shook because of the decision that we have made. What are the small foxes in our lives? What are we too loose with? What are we too open about? Accountability. Someone say accountability. I'm going on 43 years old and in our house for the sake of our children and for my own sake, every app that's on our television has a code that you have to access. So every time I go into this app, I am consciously reminding myself, are you sure you want this? Can you handle this? Everybody understands? There's some shows I will not watch without my wife or without her permission. And, and any time a scene comes up that's inappropriate for me, it's auto fast forward. I don't want those comparisons in my life at all. Pastor T, you're a good man. I'm not. I do that because I know what dwells on the inside of me. I don't do it because I'm good. 
I do it because I know my nature. That's what I mean by accountability. So what conversations do you need to have with your spouse? Baby, you know I love you and I'm not going to leave you, but I need to be honest. I need you to do better in this area. You know my past. I don't need you to be no nun right now. Mm -mm. No. My wife and I, we go on vacation. I generally pack her clothes. Most of the time, she, she can't take anything. We always buy something new. Some, these are my images. The only images I will ever have are that of my wife. So I'm intentional with those images. So when we go places, I need to see you in something new. So when she comes out the bathroom, every time, good God almighty, I'm taking you to dinner? Me? Go to school, girl. Skip dinner. Forget it. Not even hungry. With intentionality. But I had a conversation with her. Baby, all these pretty women I see, I can't afford for you to be missing, slipping. I'm going to wear this. Nope, you wore that to church. I don't even want to think about Jesus this week. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to think about prayer, scriptures, preaching, none of that. These are honest conversations that you got to have. For wives, you got to allow your husbands to have these honest conversations. Men, you got to be honest for your own self-preservation. Did you receive anything we said today? I hope today was